Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabori here. I'm back, this time with a new movie review. After so much time, you know, posting commercial breaks that I found online, not to mention having a wonderful birthday with the family, and I'm glad I did. Receiving some gifts, and hopefully I'll get plenty of others um, when I continue. <laughs> yeah, with the gift cards and all. But um, they went to eat at those places, you know. I even went to that pizza place called Toppers. It's like Round Table, but had a lot of this delicious pizza, you know, pepperoni and sausage, and you know, with salad, breadsticks and stuff. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, that's what I went to on Sunday to celebrate. And you already know I went to Bob's Pit Boy on Saturday with my father brother, my sister, my father's friend, Mary, yeah. Anyway, um, during that Saturday, as I mentioned in my birthday video, I went to go see the movie Nobody, which is a story about a mild-mannered family man who suddenly gets clashed in by a group of thugs, two burglars, and eventual drug lord. And interesting enough, uh, this was directed by none other than Aya Nasholer. Yep, the same man who gave us Hartford Henry a couple years ago. Uh, yes, which was a, a POV uh, video game style action movie like no other. <laughs> which unfortunately didn't do so well at the box office. And which is a shame, but luckily it had a Blu-ray. Hopefully it'll get a 4K someday, if Universal gets a chance to. Um, and that's a film I still don't have on my collection, so I, I hope I could find that. I mean, maybe I'll get it online if I have to. Because I should have bought the, the during Black Friday, uh, but I know it's just a lot of things were too much time for my hands here. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, it has Bob Odenkirk, uh, for those that don't know, um, he's an actor, a writer, and, and comedian. In fact, he got a start in the TV show, The Ben Stiller Show, the, the Fox version, that is, um, which he actually does all these hilarious skits and all. Um, it was Emmy Award winning, but it was short-lived. Um, I have it on DVD now, so I'm happy for that when I got it at Dollar Tree last year. Never thought I would find that. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, but then, later on, he went on to do this TV show, which is a sketch comedy called Mr. Show, uh, with David Cross. It was on HBO. I don't know if it's on HBO Max, though, but it would be nice to check it out. Uh, but then he later went on to do the, the TV series uh, Breaking Bad which led to the spin-off that he did where he played the lawyer Saul in Better Call Saul. <laughs> yeah. And he was also recently in the series uh, Undone that's on Amazon uh, which has Rosa Zalazar from Alita Battle Angel. I love that series. I'm just amazed they didn't do a second season or a third. So I don't know what happened there. Yeah, maybe they shut production off or something. I don't know. But it would have been nice to see some more. Uh, therefore, um, it's amazing that he actually got to do an action thriller that I don't think he ever has done before, aside from Breaking Bad. So this is really amazing. It's sort of like a take on John Wick, but an added touch of of all these other action films, uh, even sort of a touch on Death Wish, the Charles Bronson movie, and of course, uh, Better Call Saul, <laughs> in a way. Uh, th that's interesting because one of the producers happens to, to work on all the John Wick films, uh, David Ledge, um, actually did produce this, and that's cool. I know Bob Odenkirk produced this as well. And it does have dark humor, uh, with a lot of brutality of several action scenes that are so cleverly done. It's outrageously crazy. <laughs> yeah. 
But we had an excellent time when I saw this with my father and his friend Mary. <laughs> wow, we're we're in our mass, six feet apart, you know, having our our refreshments, all that. <laughs> Even though we were pretty much full after having a, a long meal at Buff's Bit Boy in Burbank. <laughs> To look the lake. Yeah, but it was worth it. <laughs> Meanwhile, my sister had to go see Demon Slayer. Well, anyway, let's uh, begin with the review. It stars Bob Odenkirk, Connie Nielsen. You may remember her from Gladiator. She's in the Wonder Woman movies and even the, the most recently uh, Snyder Cut of Justice League. And I believe she was also. I think, in just a well, or whatever. Um, Alexei uh, Severayakov, I don't know if I said it right, but it's kind of hard to pronounce these names. Arza, a rapper. Christopher Lloyd, yep, the legendary Christopher Lloyd uh, from Taxi, along with many movies, including the Back to the Future films, Adam's Family, and a whole lot more. <laughs> Still looking great after all these years. Uh, Gage Monroe, Halsey uh, Cotteraff, Michael Ironside, another legend here from films like Scanners, Total Recall, you know, V, Starship Troopers, and of course Turbo Kid, among others. Yeah. But it's great to see him after all these years. Uh, Billy McLellan, Colin uh, Salmon, Abaya Mangesha, Azenda Pau, and J.P. Manaxi. It's written by uh, Derek Kostad and is directed by Aya Nasholler, who, of course, had the band Biting the Elbows and also gave us Hardcore Henry. The movie begins when we meet a mild mannered family man named Hutch Menzel, played by Bob Odenkirk, who has Two children, um, a teenage boy named Blake, who's played by Gage Moreau, and his daughter uh, Sammy, played by Palsy Cotteraff, and his wife Becca, played by Connie Nielsen, uh, has a very uh, unremarkable job as an office worker uh, at this uh, metal fabrication company as run by his father-in-law, Eddie, played by Michael Ironside, uh, joining in with um, his son, Charlie, also Hutch's brother-in-law, played by Billy uh, McLellan. Um, but his entire life is going slowly um, grinding towards him you know, throughout the entire weeks of months or so. Which means that, you know, he he hasn't had time to spend with his wife. Um, his son isn't um, having much respect for him, and but the only one who can actually keep in touch is his daughter. Until one night, um, two uh, burglars, uh, men and women, had broke into the house in this suburban neighborhood and Blake wants up tackling one of them while Hutch was relenting to intervene and allows the thieves to leave yes he was about to uh, grab a, a club to whack him with um, even though they're about to steal his wallet or a couple bucks that's on the plate which also uh, reveals um, his daughter's um, bracelet inside so because of this incident that happened, he, he was considered himself a failure. Hutch has contact his uh, half-brother Harry um, directly from a hidden radio in his office. Uh, he's played by Arza. Um, and uh, explains that he held back because the burglars were very desperate, scared, and, and they were using an unloaded gun. Yeah, with no ammo. 
So then that's where later that day uh, Sammy had found out that her bracelet's been missing. It's a kitty cat bracelet. So he thought that the thieves might have had taken it. He went all the way straight to the neighborhood. I mean, while he was about to go see his elderly father, who was a former uh, FBI agent named David, who's played by Christopher Lloyd, he wants a borrowing his old FBI badge and a gun to track them down. They found their apartments and threatened them directly when they even discovered that they had a sick child, an infant. He leaves already feeling frustrated and guilt ridden until suddenly he took the bus ride home. Yeah, he also has a metro uh, bus pass where he takes along, you know, whenever he goes to work and does the usual stuff uh, with the family and all. Um, he suddenly got stopped by a gang of thugs who winds up attacking an innocent girl and that's where the action starts <laughs> when he beats the crap out of those uh, thugs around in a brutally way yeah and I mean he gets thrown around gets punched gets uh, knocked out but then he goes back and knocks them out I mean he even got um, thrown from the bus too and then he comes back for more until uh, one of them actually got uh, well got caught directly from his throat so he actually took out uh, a drinking straw just as the young girl left you know with the cup that, that fell on, on the bus and it was about to uh, cover that um, the edge so that way you know he could breathe all which have went to the hospital when he wants up back at home already you know brutally beat up and all blood and everything he realized that he hasn't been actively communicating with his family and plans to reconnect with them from his renewed self-esteem so everything will be good for the better then Harry sends uh, a man named the Barber who provides Hutch with all the information about one of the victims. He's the younger brother of Yulian uh, Konisov, uh, who's played by Alzi Sabrobradikov, yeah, who's a Russian mob boss uh, guarding the Opshak, who wants to uh, targeting the, him and his family. We also learned that he actually had some secrets, so of course there's going to be a lot of twists and turns here and there <laughs> behind this character. So he sends a crew led by his right hand man Pavel to capture Hutch directly at home and this is where the fun starts again. <laughs> where Hutch eventually uh, took them directly to the basement and have them lock inside, actually tell them don't call 911 because he's going to take out the garbage. Since basically he always fails to take out the garbage anyway because the garbage truck keeps passing by every time. <laughs> but this time he really is going to take out the garbage. Um, so he took that all these bad guys around, you know, just kept beating the shit out of them, you know, knocking them out, you know using all the, the force that he has and then <laughs> the entire house was a mess all shambled around but after he had to take down all these other guys um, which then one of the crew actually captured him put him directly into the, the trunk before he ends up finding a way to escape using the fire extinguisher <laughs> I mean Hutch actually tends to get out and and just knocks down this one guy on the back of the seat and also you know stopping all these other bad guys that, that were in the car and then crashing directly into a pole and the car just flips over and lands uh, <laughs> onto the pavement he escapes and he basically tries to reason with uh, one uh, thug right there seeing 
just before he was ready to die, questioning him and everything. <laughs> but then he came back um, already with some of the guys, you know, well, half of them are dead or, or some of them might still be, you know, breathing. And, all. and he took um, his family out of the basement and was telling them to actually, you know, go somewhere safe. So that way, you know, no one will get any harm. So after that, well, Hutch decided to um, question all these FUDs while they're strapped inside the couch. But he was playing the music uh, on his vinyl collection, right leading to uh, where he played the song uh, Wonder Wonderful World by Satchmo himself, who was Armstrong. And all of a sudden, um, the needle point uh, of the vinyl players catches on fire and the entire house uh, burns down along with them since they're already dead anyway. <laughs> and that's when Hutch decided to steal uh, the car from his next door neighbor, which unfortunately that car was from, um, from some old person who passed away. I, I think that was his father, I guess. And he just continues to drive along to go after the Russian drug lord and try to get uh, a lot of vengeance to stop him before they end up sending more guys to go after him. And he finds a way to actually set up all the traps uh, inside the, the metal fabrication, the warehouse. Yeah, he got all the, the tools he needs. Not to mention, uh, there's even one scene in the movie where the two thugs uh, came directly to the retirement home that David was staying at, and all of a sudden, this, this is really a big surprise, because usually when I see scenes like this, I was afraid that he, he was going to get killed, but thank goodness, man. He had a shotgun underneath it on his couch, and, sh and just blew both of them right out of uh, thin air. <laughs> the manager actually found out about that and he thought it was just the TV going loud. <laughs> oh man, that was sweet and totally badass too for Christopher Lloyd to see that. Um, so of course, um, Hutch already had set up her plans to go after the drug lord and, and the rest of the gang as they chase him all the way around all the way through the warehouse and that's where we get all the brutal fight scenes even more action scenes going around um, joining in with uh, David and <laughs> Harry to, to help out and finally by the time they they took him out of course they got shot well two of them did now um, things are getting better so already you know Hutch has decided to take their family to a new place, hoping to be safe, um, until they suddenly receive a phone call that might lead to maybe their next uh, crazy adventure. And they even said to themselves for this new place, does it have a basement? <laughs> so that means that, yep, they're up and ready. <laughs> Join in with David and Harry. <laughs> Oh boy, I know. Um, a little bit of a giveaway here, but I, I thought this was just outrageously uh, crazy, but fun and awesome movie, and I love it. I mean, it's been a while since I've seen an action film like this too, especially during these tough times. But this was perfect. I mean, Rob Oldenkirk really nailed this performance. I mean, it shows that even a comedian can actually play a much dramatic role and also because he's not an action star he can actually play a very tough role where he can actually change his uh, self-esteem and all of that all in one and he gets you know punches and kicks all these bad guys you know takes out all the, the stuff that he has or <laughs> take them down one by one I mean this is incredible I mean I'm even surprised that, you know, Keanu Reeves would have played this kind of role, too, in that sort of way. But I wish that would be the case, but, but Bob really nailed it. 
there's a lot of dark humor in there too, and I could definitely uh, recite that because since he's the producer, I mean, he really did accept all the the humor that really went into it that you'll never forget. Yeah, because you know we were laughing. I mean, we were laughing so hard when we saw this. Um, but Christopher Lloyd also, uh, you got to give him credit because even though he didn't speak much in the movie, um, at least, you know, he got to play a badass role. I mean, like father, like son. <laughs> and I love that. And and the fact that you got his half-brother, the Harry, to join in, which sadly he was only there for the last half of the movie. You only get to hear his voice. He was great, too. I mean... Especially during the when they went directly to the mine, the warehouse, and they had to take down all these bad guys, and oh, uh, and boy, they were so again brutal, and like they had to use all these other skills and stuff, and they they set up all the traps and all that crazy shit happening. I mean, it was such a massacre. Um, and then there's also a nice moment too where. Which, which actually happened in the opening credits, too. Apparently, he turned himself in to the cops, uh, where he actually rescues um, a kitty cat, and also has um, a can of tuna to, to feed him with while he was in his handcuffs. And then the authorities was telling them in, in the irrigation room that... Who are you? <laughs> and he says, I'm nobody. <laughs> That's just such class right there. Such class. Um, the cast was great too. Um, Connie Nelson, specifically, um, was beautiful. Still is. Uh, Gage Monroe was okay. Nothing special. But hey, we, we had to go over there for for drama. Um, but I thought uh, Palsy uh, Kadarev was actually very cute uh, for this young daughter, and and shows that she actually really cares for Hutch. Um, it's great to see Michael Ironside again too. I mean, even though it's a bit of a small role here and there, playing the father, but it's nice to see him for a while. Uh, the bad guys, you know, including the the actor Alexi, you know, play Julian. Hey, it's your standard bad guys, but you know you're in for it. <laughs> so he's typical. Not to mention the action scenes, once again, is as incredible as ever. I mean, you could tell it was well choreographed the way they did it. I mean, there's even scenes where he does pull out a, a machine gun, too, and and he also took out everything he does to, to stop these guys. This, this is just a main reason to see this movie in the theater, so you can have an excellent time and just have fun without any problems, and praying that you don't get sick or anything. <laughs> That's very funny. Uh, so far, it's making $42 million out of its $16 million budget. Yeah, it's pretty small. I know originally it was going to be released by STX Films, but because I guess they got merged um, by another company that Universal decided to take over it, and they released it themselves. Yeah, even though they were going to release it in 2020, so they finally got one from March. But I'm glad they're still playing it so far. So of course, check this movie out. You're gonna, you won't be disappointed. You're gonna have an awesome time. Um, even if you're gonna watch it uh, everywhere you go, and I, I can't wait to get this movie when it comes out. Maybe I'll get this on 4K, Ultra HD, since now I have a 4K player, <laughs> and I'll just watch the hell out of it. So, anyway, and it's definitely gonna be on my list of the best films of 2021. <laughs> right there. So that's nobody who's basically a somebody. <laughs> and I give the movie five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.